a 10 gram god trip. Posted to the Shroom subreddit by Craze Gunner four months ago. This is a trip report after taking 10 grams of magic mushrooms. The strain was PE. I want to take a minute to clear some stuff up before I get into the trip report. This was not recreational by any means, and I never intended for it to be that way. I did these 10 Gs because I'm a combat vet that suffers severely with PTSD, anxiety, anger, the whole nine things that come up with being a combat vet. I've done several trips in the past ranging from 2 grams up to 7, and while those trips helped me to take the edge off my anxiety, I wanted to go to the source and find out what the exact thing is that is causing my anxiety in the first place. Stare it in the eyes, make it my bitch, and as you'll soon find out, why well, was I wrong about that? This trip was purely therapeutical. So to start it out, I'd gotten 15 grams of penis envy from my dealer, because my girlfriend was wanting to do her own 5 gram trip, and I was still at the time on the edge of doing another 7 gram one, or going full board to find the source of my anxiety and do the 10 gram trip. Come the next morning, and I was weighing everything out, I decided that I'm going to go full bore and do the 10 gram trip. I weighed them out and got to exactly 10 Gs. I put them in my blender and made them a fine powder. I then made myself a tea and mixed in two hot chocolate packets and drank it like I have done with all my trips prior. I then lay down in my bed. I put my earbuds in and turned on a lyricless trippy song playlist, put on my trip mask, literally just a sleeping mask to block out all incoming light, and waited. My girlfriend was on my right side and was there to trip sit me. This was not her first ride and thank god it wasn't. The last time that I truly remember was 8.48am. Within probably 10 minutes I began to see light visuals. At first it was me above a lake and I was watching the ripples of the water go through the lake itself. It was very peaceful and sombre. This very quickly escalated to visions that I was in a room and there were people there. They began to open the door and leave. I told them not to leave me. I didn't want them to leave me, and I was enjoying the time that I was spending with them. Shortly after saying that though, I realised I was going against my one biggest piece of advice, and that was fighting the mushroom. I was fighting them trying to get them to leave, so I told them they can go should they like, and they did. Visions of them were replaced with a black demonic figure with a handful of some golden energy looking stuff. It's quite hard to describe how it looked to me. This figure then began to take away the energy, and I once again set myself up for failure, and told it not to take the energy at all. After realising the mistake that I had made, I told that it could take it. For a brief moment after that, I was talking to a black man about something, and he phased into a red car, his head turning into a pizza box. I'd been craving Domino's pizza for some time, so I'm sure that just made its way into my trip that way. It was very weird, and I remember exclaiming out loud and audibly laughing that this man's head turned into a pizza box. From there, the trip took a super awesome turn, and I had become literal nothingness. I was infinitely big, and infinitely small, and I was left to explore the world itself. God told me that the world to me was my side of the bed and he proclaimed to me that he wanted me to explore it. I began to physically explore my bed. I was flipped upside down on the bed for some time, putting my head where my feet normally go, and feet where my head goes. I was feeling and exploring my girlfriend's legs. I was a literal nothingness, left to explore the vast darkness of under the covers. It was the most incredible feeling. At some point when I was under there I pulled off my trip mask and changed my playlist from my lyricless playlist to my normal one, which contained songs from Dayseeker, Bad Omens and Lorna Shaw, heavy metal, death metal bands. Eventually I came out from underneath the covers and resumed laying in my normal spot on my bed. From here, my memory becomes kind of clogged on this chain of events leading up to about 5 minutes prior to me peaking, but I did begin to slowly dissolve into a panic state of mind and I was unaware of the change in the trip, and so was my girlfriend. Things began to take a turn when I started becoming indecisive. I would say I wanted sparkling water, and my girlfriend would go get me some. When she would come back, I would exclaim that I no longer wanted any. And this happened several times. 
I'd given my girlfriend my phone and told her to change songs when I requested. At one point I had to restart Immortal by Lorna Shaw three times because I wasn't happy with it. Then I quieted down and laid in bed. I went through about 30 minutes to music before asking her to restart back on Immortal once again. And then, shit went south. And it went south quick. I rolled over and jokingly said to my girlfriend, I'm scared I'm going to fall off the floor. Then about 10 seconds later, I, I did it again, saying the same thing but slightly more serious. And then, a third time I did it, except this time it was filled with rage. I slung my trip mask across my room and screamed at her, I'm scared I'm going to fall off the fucking floor. The trip at this point had become sour, and I was quickly losing my mind, ego, and everything about me was just quickly vanishing. I was only starting the ego death right now. I remember looking out of my window, which is normally full of trees, and it was all grey, and there were no trees to see at all. It was at this point, I knew I was in for something, and I wasn't prepared for it. I pulled my covers over my eyes and pulled my earbuds out, saying, I don't want the music anymore. And I just laid there. I felt my soul surge with the energy of a million souls, and I began a physical climb up what looked like Mount Everest. I was out of body. This was not an easy climb, and it was everything. It was all my trauma, my PTSD, my anxiety, my anger, just fucking everything. This was that mountain, symbolised. And the power of those million souls was what gave me the energy to climb this mountain. I was peaking. Peaking harder than I'd ever peaked in my life. Then, I came out of the out-of-body experience. There was music in my ears, but nothing was playing. My earbuds were out and I'm pretty sure my TV was off. What I was hearing was the most beautiful sound I have ever heard in my life. I broke down, and I broke down hard. I was crying the hardest that I have cried in years. I told my girlfriend to hold on, because I was just feet from the peak of this mountain of trauma that I had just climbed, and I needed her physical energy to complete this climb. She held on, and I fucking blasted off. It was amazing. It was the greatest release of emotion and pain that I have ever wanted. I remember saying, This is what I've been after. And it truly was. It was exactly what I needed. And my girlfriend was there with me to give me the final bit of strength to come up and stand atop that mountain of torment and trauma. I thanked the souls that had joined me on my journey, and who had so graciously given me their energy. I remember screaming at the absolute top of my lungs, I am God, and I meant it with the conviction of a billion souls, because in that moment, standing atop that mountain, I was, I was God. There was only one person in the universe that could have done what I just did, and it therefore meant that I was that. I got out of my bed, and came into my office and collapsed on the floor, a broken man. I was broken. I just overcame what I'd been using shrooms to help me overcome and I didn't know what it was I was meant to be anymore. I began the most brutal ego death that I've ever seen, and I was the test subject on this ride to hell. I was on the floor of my office, screaming and crying. I called for my girlfriend to come in and just be with me, because I was so fucking scared. I was a broken man, and at the same time, I felt like I was a god. I was a broken god. One that had gone astray from the normal path of the gods, and one that will forever be exiled and forgotten about. Unless he does one thing. I asked my girlfriend to get me my favourite sweatpants. What was coming up was something I could have never been prepared for, and I don't think anyone would ever be prepared for. She brought me my sweatpants and a blanket, and I laid there knowing what I must do. But it felt so good to have that thought. It was the happiest thought of my life, while simultaneously being filled with dread that I must actually do it. It was like this trip was the pathway to it. I knew what I had to do, and I learnt about those two incidents prior that I must not fight the mushroom. I must give in to it and listen to it. The it that I am talking about is suicide. My trip had turned sour. It had turned beyond sour, and I was happy about it. 
I was extremely happy that I was prepared to kill myself. I was seeing it as a gateway to the next level. I was at a fork in the road. I began pacing about because while this thought was on one brain wavelength of mine, another brain wavelength was being the more sober one and it knew suicide is never the option. I knew how bad it was. It knew that I must never do that. I looked at my girlfriend as she was following me around as I paced between the bedroom and my office and I told her, whatever happens, happens. That was all that I was able to say. I was trying to ground myself but the combination of the overwhelming music in my ears and the ungodly intense visuals and the fact that at this point I'd completely lost my grip with reality made it literally impossible to ground myself. I was panicking. I was in the midst of the most brutal ego death and I was at a crossroads. Fight the mushroom and live or submit and fucking die. And obviously I fought and I fought with fucking everything that I had. The only way that I knew how to fight it was lay down in the bed. So I did. I was still trying to ground myself at this point because suicide was still ever so prevalent in my head. To me, reality was just a word. It was not something tangible. It was not something that I could touch. It was not me, laying on my bed with my girlfriend standing up next to me. I was a nothingness again, but in the most horrible way. I tried everything to ground myself. But at this point, I lost the ability to distinguish between what was genuine reality, my memories, fake bullshit that my brain was concocting, and whatever shit else was coming out. It was all one, and the one that it was, was not a good one. Now, I had four trains of thought, and four sets of emotions all running congruent with each other. The primary one was one where I truly believed that I had indeed blown my brains out with my 12 gauge shotgun. I believed that I was living in the spirit realm, and it was the most horrifyingly peaceful place that I have ever been. There was a point I remember getting out of bed and checking my gun safe, ensuring that the door on it was still closed and locked. I was making sure that I hadn't gone through with the suicide. While I was able to tell that the door was shut, seeing this did not calm down this train of thought. The second was one when my girlfriend also panicked, and had called 911 and my mother. I genuinely believed that there were EMTs and police standing outside of my door and my house and they were waiting for me to calm down from the trip before they came in and swooped me up and arrested me for some unimaginable crime that I felt that I committed. I was petrified. It was the scariest thing that I've ever experienced and felt. These two aforementioned trains of thought would sometimes meld with each other and become one. The third train of thought was one where I had my psychotic break and I was actively being carted off on a stretcher, being taken to a loony ward because I was now permanently stuck in this headspace and level of high. I had accepted it, and I understood it. I was very matter of fact with this. I accepted it, and I felt that I deserved what I had coming for me, and that was being locked in a loony ward for the rest of my god-given life. I told my girlfriend that I loved her, and that I knew that I was going to lose her, my job and my sponsorship, just weeks prior to this trip, I signed my first major sponsorship contract for motorcycle racing, and it's something that brings me great joy, seeing where all my hard work has finally gone, and things were finally starting to come up. The final train of thought wasn't really a train of thought at all, but it was the light at the end of this horrific tunnel. Little did I know, but when I was at my peak, standing on top of the mountain of my trauma and pain, there really was one more step I hadn't yet stepped up. And this was the final step. I got to rebuild my brain to be how I wanted. I got to pick and choose what I wanted to keep and what I wanted to throw away. I was rebuilding my very brain and it brought me great solace to get to do this. So I did. I rebuilt my brain. I picked and chose what I wanted to keep and what I wanted to lose. I peaked at about 10.30 according to the timestamp on my GoPro and I estimate this phase of the trip to have lasted until about 12 noon. Through that hour and a half, I was slowly realising that I was starting to get to be able to ground myself. It started out with me figuring out the time and the date. To me though, they meant nothing, and were just words, but I was able to understand something physical. 
In this time, I set a goal for myself. A goal of 4pm. I just needed to make it to 4pm. And my girlfriend was there to help me with that goal. I cannot tell you how many times I asked her the time, date and just repeated. I just need to make it to 4pm now. My girlfriend said it was at least five times that I asked this. Slowly but surely, I came down. I was not stuck in that frame of mind like I thought I was. And I indeed didn't kill myself. I wasn't being taken off to the loony ward. And there weren't police and EMTs outside my door and house. Waiting for me to come down from the trip. I was going to be okay. I was alive and I had a new brain. A brain that I rebuilt to the specifications that I wanted. One without trauma or pain or suffering. I still had my wonderful girlfriend. And she was there the whole trip. Fast forward 11 days, this trip was on December 3rd, and I'm still struggling. I find myself sometimes second guessing if I'm really alive, not really believing that I'm not in the spirit realm. But that's becoming less and less as time goes on. I keep replaying this trip in my head, to gain a better understanding of what went wrong and where it went wrong. I think it went wrong when I yeeted my trip mask across the floor and exclaimed that I'm scared of falling off the fucking floor. I don't know why it went bad, and I probably never will know why it went bad. All I know is that I must take that trip, and learn and grow from it. There is a lesson for everything, and I'm learning that lesson every day now. As for my rebuilt brain, it's incredible. I really did rebuild my brain. Since then I haven't had those issues that I mentioned prior. I'm able to get to sleep in a reasonable time now. I'm able to sleep well in fact. Something that I haven't had in years. I don't have nightmares or night terrors anymore now. I think that as bad as this trip was, it was also just as good. I'm taking every day in stride now. I'm working on myself and my issues. And for my girlfriend, she didn't know. She was not aware that I took the 10 gram heroic dose. She thought that I was doing 7 grams. And it wasn't until I was laying on the floor of my office that she learnt the true size of the dose that I took. I hate that I put her through that trip. I regret at least not telling her and giving her a heads up. But I am forever grateful that she was there with me and helped me climb the final steps of a mountain. I owe her dearly for that. And that's it, man. That's my trip. I call it my God trip because I was. I was a broken and misplaced God simple as that. That was a really interesting Beyond Heroic Dose report, probably one of the best 10 gram uh, trip reports I've read yet. It was just so engaging and obviously it sort of had the elements of the yin and yang, good and the bad going on there, but it did get seriously intense at some point, although um, what ends up happening with these 10 gram uh, heroic doses, even some 5 gram ones, where sort of your grip on reality is completely shattered because you're under the effects of so much of uh, the mushrooms, there's so much psilocybin in your brain that your hold on normal sober reality is just completely gone and you are sort of experiencing this sort of dreamlike narrative. There was a lot of symbolism in this trip report that was really interesting, especially the symbolism of Mount Everest. There was a very interesting parallel between this report and my own where I actually envisioned my sort of trauma and shadow or ego that I needed to work through was actually Mount Fuji. And unfortunately, unlike this guy, I didn't take a single step up the mountain at all. I just envisioned it um, from a distance that sort of tried to tell me in some profound sense that I was very much far off from facing myself and that I needed to take greater steps towards doing so. And that probably explained why my trip went really crazy. Although I wasn't on nearly enough to turn it into some like suicidal mission. Um, Again, apologies to anybody who got triggered by the suicide references. Um, I know that it's a very touchy subject, but I didn't really want to censor it from the report because it was very integral to the lesson that was learned in here. I believe, personally, I believe that this element of suicide probably came up because this guy suffers so much with PTSD. He says he's a combat veteran. I imagine probably in, in the period of time leading up to this, he probably has had suicidal thoughts, and this is something he must face very much head on in his trip. Obviously it can be healthy to have a, a deal of confidence going in and making sure that you're ready to face up to anything that might come up, especially with a 10 gram trip where it's like 
there's no beating around the bush. You are going to have to face your demons um, when you're doing something that heavy. Um, yeah, it's not exactly a problem taking 10 grams, but when you have the sort of element of hubris, the arrogance that this guy went into it with, which is not a judgment against him whatsoever at all, like, this is just the circumstances of, uh, of his trip, but again, you do will have to pay the price for going into it like that. What's funny is the top comment um, on the Reddit post is uh, by OKTOR5503 with the quote, I ain't no bitch from the trip report. And then he says, mushrooms have entered the chat. The guy who writes the trip report then replies with, I was turned into the mushrooms bitch. When I threw my trip mask across my bedroom, that's when I knew I was in trouble. And then another reply from Penji says, to answer your question, that's where you went wrong. Not that you took 10 grams, but that you were too confident with it. The OP then goes on to aptly say, I tried to make the mushrooms my bitch, and in turn, it made me its bitch, I guess. This is a common thread between a lot of these heavy dose reports where someone goes in with the attitude of oh I'm just going to do anything that comes up, I'll be sound me, I'm going to kick the shit out of these mushrooms in this trip and that attitude is pretty much just a coping mechanism in disguise. Realistically the, the purity of your being is actually not ready to do it at all, it's actually scared and it puts on this front to make itself give that artificial feeling of being up for anything that's going to come up. But actually, it is yeah just sort of a defense against um, having to face up to yourself. You actually really don't want to do, do face up to yourself at all. And there was a lot of elements of that in this trip. But this trip actually was amazing in the end. Like this, this guy literally says, he, he did go to hell and back. Oftentimes, this does happen when you take 10 grams of mushrooms. And just to dispel this uh, myth, you're not always going to have a hellish experience when you have an ego, therefore face your traumas and that it's all just relative and it's different and it's just that you're probably more likely going to have this sort of experience percentage wise when you take a 10 gram dose like say maybe like i don't know say like three grams and have a have an ego death probably percentage wise it's going to be much less than taking a 10 gram trip the gun is going to be more loaded with bullets at uh, 10 grams and beyond so again, it isn't a problem that taking 10 grams at all. Some people are destined to do this stuff. Some people just go further beyond. Some psychonauts just fucking love it, don't they? And they're very much ready to do it. But in this guy's state that he was in, it just seemed like he was building and building his way up the dosage to get into a point where he's like, oh, I just need it to automatically fix me, which in a sense it did. He forced him to basically rebuild his brain, which obviously I don't think he literally physically rebuilt his brain from scratch, but symbolically and experientially, when you're in a state like that, it literally can feel exactly like that, just how you would be able to dream yourself doing it. When you're on a cycle, you can literally dream yourself doing these things and it then has an effect in your real life. So that element of working through his trauma, uh, the process of doing so is physically manifested in the trip as working your way up this massive mountain to reach the top and overcoming every single one of your fears. And obviously the very last step, the most important step for him, was sort of facing up to these suicidal thoughts. Well, this is just my interpretation of it, really. Um, maybe he'd never even thought about suicide at all, but it just came up at the last minute because he sort of, it maybe was symbolic of him completely like shedding his ego and embracing what it truly is, the, the final path, the final obstacle to fully rebuilding his life and overcoming his trauma, which he doesn't talk about exactly what he went through as a combat vet, but I can only imagine that it was some serious stuff to have filled his mind with... Uh, that flooding of PTSD and anxiety and anger and it obviously yeah this trip did go south at a point and it did get sort of it teetered on the edge of being quite catastrophic really and he also experienced these psychotic breaks um, but in a way you sort of got to experience insanity to realize what sanity is especially when you're doing these super mega like shamanistic ritual level experiences just as being a sort of a normal-ish person uh, from like the West. I assume this guy's from the West, I assume he's American. Um, oftentimes, we just most people just don't even know, even psychonauts themselves don't know just how deep the rabbit hole goes and how much fear you actually have that you don't even realize. Um, another interesting parallel between this guy's experience and my own is just that thought of um, uh, sort of these paranoid delusions of thinking the police and EMTs outside your door at the house. I remember my first ego death, it was like that. I thought there was like, I thought I'd woken up in some like Jeep Grand Theft Auto world and there were sirens going off and like rocket launchers outside. Um, my, my trips are always really wacky like that. It always feels like I'm in some giant sandbox 
infinite sandbox open world role playing game, like sort of the ultimate video game, um, and everything just starts going chaotic. I remember again another one where I was sort of manifesting this person, giving this, giving me CPR. Sort of again, it was uh, a symbolic of me sort of waking up and coming back to life in a sense. It's very interesting, it's sort of like what you'd see in a film there. Uh, all the sim symbolism you see in like surrealist films, say like David Lynch films, um, or often like sort of out there animated films where they literally depict the process of sort of facing yourself, becoming a god, becoming a higher being, um, ridding yourself of your ego in very sort of artistic, visual, metaphorical uh, senses. So yeah, that was sort of the element of this trip that had a parallel between that and sort of very trippy sort of art films. And there's a reason them trippy art films are actually like that because when you actually go through these experiences, these mad trips, that is literally what it feels like. It feels like experiencing sort of a surre surrealist movie with your own literal direct consciousness, which is absolutely crazy and one of the most fascinating aspects of the psychedelic experience. Um, another interesting thing to unpack is uh, that his girlfriend really did help him out. This was the perfect example of a great trip sitter, although he did regret at the end of it that he sort of uh, hid the fact that he was on 10 Gs. I mean, you should probably disclose that with your partner uh, at first because that is a serious thing that they need to know about. Um, they probably will uh, actually advise you not to do it and that's m m probably why he didn't tell her because he knew that she would have uh, probably flipped a shit, rightfully so. But again, at least it worked out, and this guy says he's taking every day in stride now, working on himself and his issues. Um, over time, he's going to keep integrating and unpacking this experience. Uh, really valuable trip, I'd say. Obviously, it got got a bit weird, and obviously, the guy with the thing with the pizza box said, "Like, what is that fucking Domino's are sending subliminal advertisements into people's ten gram mushroom trips now? The future is here, boys, isn't it?" But yeah, that was a pretty funny element of the trip. Oftentimes, uh, it when it's a uh, trip this heavy, <clears throat> it's sort of a mixture of the whole spectrum of the psychedelic experience, these funny, fish, funny visuals, um, sort of uh, feelings of bliss and infinite nothingness and euphoria, and then it just starts to become sort of the, the inverse, the hellish stuff to then go further into the, the depth and the profundity, <clears throat> and then these sort of like visual metaphors that you have to overcome and process, and then also sort of, because it takes you out of your sort of sane, sober human mind, which is a, a lot a lot of the time dictated by how well the chemical makeup of your brain is is running on a day-to-day -day basis and when that's tampered with with an immense amount of psilocybin you are going to experience some level of like schizophrenia uh, psychosis and if you're not ready to experience that then it can go seriously awry but thankfully this guy somehow managed to break through the other side and really get to the root cause of what was going on with him so yes my g big ups Another cool tidbit that I'll just leave on is the part where he talks about him being able to hear music without his earbuds on, uh, because obviously they fell out, so it was still just showing to him in a sense that you don't, when you're in that level of like infinite consciousness, infinite imagination, or just even a heightened state from taking a psychedelic, because things are so dreamlike and illogical and aren't really bound by physicality, you sort of become aware that when you're actually listening to music, you're actually very much sort of creating it via your consciousness in a sense. This is a very profound realization that you can come to. I'm not saying it's, well, I say realization, a profound insight that needs work basically. But I've had this sort of thought many times where the only reason, it, the only thing that's stopping you from just imagining music right now without any physical um, tool to do so is because right now in this human dream we are limited to physicality that's quite literally the the distinctions we're creating these distinctions to form this experience of being a human one of which is that um to ground yourself fully in the dream i have to pick up my headphones then play a phone on my song and put wire the headphones into my phone to then create the experience of it coming through my ears out the headphones but when you're in such a heightened state you don't even need because the limits and boundaries of reality start to dissipate you can sort of literally create music with your own consciousness because at the end of the day even on a scientific level what's all that all that's happening is when you put listening to music is your brain is picking up these signals and sort of creating it itself through perception so there's even a bit of scientific uh, evidence to back that up with but to truly understand it you need to marry 
uh, science and spirituality and mysticism and all these other things have realised what's actually going on with consciousness and that it sort of is imagining absolutely everything, even the even the limits, it's imagining these limits, it's imagining this wardrobe I'm, I always keep knocking on in these trip reports, I'm literally imagining that um, that limit so that because if there was no limit, if my, my hand went through the wardrobe, my whole conception of being a human would fly out the window and I'd experience being insane, so it's a very delicate, fine balance uh, between sanity and insanity and oftentimes when people get into these experiences and have these sort of wacky synesthesia type um, sensations, they will sort of react to it in quite a destructive way, I'm like, no, no, it's not real, it's not real, it's all in my head, and it's like, yeah, it's sort of all in your head, but you have to embrace that and realise just the spectrum of experience and that the human way of experiencing reality is just the tip of the iceberg, in fact, it's so much the tip that it may as well, it's like a literal fucking needle point, barely even the tip of the iceberg, it's just, it's basically nothingness compared to every infinite thing that's going on. So yeah, big big one to unpack in this. What do you guys think of it? What did you take away from it? And how do you interpret his experience? Um, obviously, one of the big kernels of it is the crucial truth of realizing that we are all God in a way. Um, it's it, God is in us. It's not in a building or a book. And yeah, it, it very much is. It, it, this is probably this first this guy's first glimpse of that. And um, this will probably take him down. Uh, the spiritual journey of realizing himself, realizing himself as infinity further and further, and realizing that the distinction between self and other is, is or possibly could be imagined. At the end of the day, what do I know? I like to admit that I don't know anything because that makes life a lot more juicier. Knowing that there's even more things to find out, definitely goes deeper. I think I don't just think it ends at oh we are all God. I think it goes even deeper than that. But again, that's just me theorizing. So, look forward to me theorizing again in the future.